Hello everyone and welcome back to another Astroneer video, this time on the concept of loops. Now with the addition of Automation 2.0 and this repeat build button, um, it kind of obsoletes a little bit of loops when it comes to actual fabrication of things, but this is kind of an interesting topic and it will definitely be useful in some of our later uh, build along videos for the calculator and we will talk about some of the complex mess that's over there. But we're going to start very simply at infinite loops and just what a first pass is. Now here I have a button tied up to a delay repeater which is tied to the next delay repeater tied to the next one and each one is going to trigger a horn placed on top of varying amounts of scrap just to get a little bit of a different tone out of it and when you press the button because each of these are on a three cycle delay it will trigger the next one after three cycles and the next one after three cycles and this is only going to run one time through and I need to make sure I position myself close to the horn so you guys can actually hear it because unbeknownst to me that was not the loudest choice to make. Um, but as I said, that ran one time through and when we pass that back to the first one, or sorry, when we put this cable pin back on the first button uh, delay repeater, this is going to essentially create an infinite loop, which can be very useful in some instances just to make sure things run consistently and forever. The issue comes, however, when we want to determine a method for running this specified loop a certain amount of times. And that's what we've got kind of set up over here. Now, instinctually, everything should look roughly the same where we have a delay repeater triggering the first one into the second one into the third one. And we start everything off by a button repeater. The difference here is we have two switches in front of a power sensor. Now remember, these two switches act like an AND gate. The first switch is off and this is our entire loop enable switch. This allows us to run through the entire loop. Now the second switch is on. This allows the individual iterations to begin. So what we are saying right now is we don't want to run this loop, but we are currently ready to run the first iteration. Now when we press this button, we're going to open up the enable. So the enable is going to allow power to flow through to this power switch based on whether we want to run the, the current loop or not. Because this is default open, we are ready to run the first loop as soon as it is enabled. Now that's going to trigger this power sensor, which is, as I said, going to start the loop on the delay repeater. Now it's also going to turn the switch off. So once we start a current loop, we don't want to move to the next loop until we actually finish this iteration. And the way we do that is by reaching this final delay repeater. We trigger this delay repeater, which then re-triggers the button. The reason there's an extra delay repeater on a one cycle here is because when we do a couple other stuff with this count repeater, um, we need to make sure this count repeater triggers first. And then one cycle after that, we can trigger this switch just to make sure we don't loop one past what we originally set it to. So this delay repeater is necessary. It's just to, again, to get add a little bit of delay to triggering this power switch. Now, as I said, at the end of the loop, we also trigger a count repeater. Now, this count repeater is where you actually set the amount of times that you want to run the loop. You can't go less than two, so you can basically just have a switch start at one and then run the loop once, or you can go all the way up to a variable amount. So say we wanted to run the loop five times. Let's watch what ends up happening. I need to position myself close to the horns and we can see it go. Now that happened five times, especially exactly as we designated, because by the time we got to the end here, we triggered our count repeater. So we triggered it once, twice, th three, four, and then the fifth time we turned our enable off. So we no longer were capable of looping. And then one cycle after that happened, we turned our iterable on. So we were now ready to begin the next loop, but we were no longer enabled. So we only actually ran it five times, which is exactly what we were looking for. Once again, the issue with this design is we need to manually set how many times we actually want to run through this loop. If we wanted to do this as a variable input, well, then we're going to need a design that looks a little bit like this. Now, this design is for the most part the exact same as the previous one that we looked at, except it now has binary attached to it. So this first set right here is pretty much the exact same, except it loops twice. The second one, loops four times and then the third one loops eight times now again because you can't go less than two um, i did have to modify the setup just a little bit so this first button will loop it once plus whatever you have here this button will loop it only what you have here so essentially this does your odd numbers and then or your even numbers excuse me and then this button handles if you want to do an odd number of loops 
Now, once again, we have our standard delay repeaters that trigger a horn, move to the next, move to the next, and so forth. Except this delay repeater always triggers this first switch here. So these switches are essentially our enables. These enable us to check the two channel, check the four channel, and then check the eight channel. And what happens inside each of them is they are controlled by these two switches right here. Now these two switches, idealistically, would be controlled from a control bit. So this power sensor over here is purely for demonstration reasons. When I flip this switch, it changes both of them at the same time. Um, when I turn it off, it changes once again both of them at the same time. Um, this is to symbolize that if you're using binary to control it, you would have one bit for this one, one bit for this one, and then one bit for this one. Um, so that's essentially what I represent by here. Now these two switches need to be in opposite states from one another because the top switch allows us to actually use the number of loops for that cycle or for that branch. So this would allow us to use two, two cycles, four cycles, and eight cycles. The lower power sensor skips the cycle. So if we don't want to loop twice and we want to get to the four, we use this segment pin to move to the next segment. And that's how we actually step through all of them. So the general operation is going to be, we open up this power switch and we check if we want to loop twice by going back to the start um, and then closing this off until we you know, loop twice. Or do we want to not loop twice and just go on to the next segment, close this one off and reopen up this one. And that's essentially what happens in all these loops. This one will then check if we want to actually loop four times based on the state of the switch. If we don't, then we just move to the eight. And if we do want to loop eight because the switch is open, then we'll loop eight times. If not, then we end the cycle because we don't actually have any bits after this. Now, once again, these switches are, or these count repeaters all come from a delay repeater, which is once more just to give it that one cycle of delay just to make sure that we handle things properly. And once these count repeaters are actually triggered, we swap the inputs. So after we run twice, we switch the inputs and we will not traverse down this branch again until we actually set the, you know, theoretical binary number to allow us to loop twice. Now, as I said, these are tied directly to the switches themselves. In reality, I would probably have it switch the input back off. So this would turn on our ability to loop eight times. And then after we loop eight times, this would then go and turn it back off. So we no longer loop that amount. Um, so we can see a quick little functional example. Again, I got to make sure I stand close to the horn so you can actually hear them the proper amount of times. But say we wanted to loop five times. We would theoretically turn on the bit that would allow us to loop four times and then we would trigger the one plus button. So we're gonna loop four times plus one gives us five. And there we go, that was our fifth loop. And the good thing about this is everything is in the exact state that we left it in beforehand. So both these are off on, off on, off on. All these three are off and all of the count repeaters have zero triggers going towards it which is absolutely perfect. Now, say we wanted to trigger maybe 10 times. Once again, we would enable our bit for triggering eight times, and then we would click our button for two. So here we go. Now here's the thing, that was eight times because I completely forgot I didn't enable the two here. So we did only loop just eight times, which was as intended. Um, so I can fix that real fast and just show you why it was different. Once again, I'm gonna enable the eight, but then I also need to enable the two. So that's what we accidentally messed up here in order to loop 10 times. So I've totally forgot this is not plus two to the loop. This is plus zero to the loop. This is plus one to the loop. Again, just because the setup was annoying because I didn't realize the count repeaters can't go to one and whatnot. But yeah, so this is going to loop 10 times now because we have two plus eight gives us 10. And there we go, that was all 10 loops. So that is kind of it that I have for all of you guys today. Um, I know that the, the multiple variable loops is a little bit more complicated, but if you have the ability to set the amount that you need yourself, uh, you can certainly use a little bit of a simpler design like this, but as always, if you do have any questions, please feel free to reach out to me on any of the platforms. All my links are down below. Don't forget to subscribe if you guys like the video and by all means check out Twitch as well, where I do this kind of building things. Um, 
not as frequently right now with the server that we have going on Astroneer, but more so when uh, when we have some other projects that we're working on. So thank you all for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed it. By all means, let me know if you have any questions. As always, I know I keep reiterating that, but please, if you're struggling with anything, I'm more than happy to help. Have a good rest of your day, everyone, evening and or night, whenever you decide to watch this, and we'll see you in the next video.